Hello, and welcome to the PC America Reseller Training Series. My name is Adam Mora, and I am the sales engineer that will be conducting today's training. Today we're going to be discussing vendors and purchase orders. Let's get started. When you first click on the software, this brings you into your invoice screen. On your invoice screen, you have three options on the top right. You have Manager, Help, and Exit. Manager allows you to make any kind of back office changes or adjustments that need to be made in the software. Help stores all of our FAQ knowledge, so if you're struggling with any aspect of the software, you can refer to our help menu. Exit allows you to exit out of the software. Manager. When you click on Manager, this prompts you for a password. In the software, we have a defaulted password, which is admin on the top, and 01 at the bottom. Let's type that in now. A D M I N. Enter, and our ID at the bottom is 01. 01. Enter. This now brings us into our manager screen. We're now going to navigate to our vendor maintenance. So we're going to click on number 5 administrative, letter G, vendor maintenance. Now this is the screen where you're going to add all of your vendors in the system. Keep in mind, if your vendors are not added into the system, then you cannot order more of that product. The only required fields when adding a vendor into the system is your vendor number and company name. I recommend putting in as much information as you possibly can because the more information, the better it is for you. We also have the ability to select the method of how you would be sending that vendor over. The purchase order. So when you hit the drop down arrow, you have three options, print, fax, and email. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a vendor into the system. We can give the vendor any kind of number that we want, or any unique identifier, or even a telephone number. So let's say, let's give them a telephone number, 845-920-0800. Copy name is going to be Adams Chips. And my PO method will be print. So when I, set, when I create a purchase order, it's going to prompt me to print this purchase order whenever I create it. So now let's hit save. Your vendor has been added, would you like to add another? We're going to say no. Now let's hit save changes one more time to make sure our changes commit. So as you can see, all I entered in here was the vendor number and the company name. I also selected the method of how the PO will be delivered to the vendor as well. So now let's exit out of vendor maintenance and associate this with an item in inventory. So we're going to hit exit now. And we're going to go to administrative number five and letter A, inventory maintenance. So we just created a vendor called Adam's Chips. So let's do a lookup and find a bag of chips that we have in inventory. So we're going to hit our lookup button here, which is your fastest and most efficient way of looking up your items. You'll have the ability to sort through categories, departments, and vendors. So let's look up our departments. We want to look for our chips. So we're going to hit the drop down arrow, select chips. It shows you that I have one bag of chips here called Doritos. So currently in stock, we have 100. If we order more of this product, you'll see that the number in stock will increase. So we're now going to click on ordering info. When you click on ordering info, this is where you come to associate the vendor with the item in inventory. You also have a reorder quantity and reorder level. This, this can be very useful, especially when you need to order more of that product or if this is a product that is a top seller. By selling, setting these two levels, it will automatically throw this into a report called your reorder report. This way, you'll know that the item needs to be ordered once it's reached a certain level that you have set, and it will automatically tell you how much of that item you need to order as long as you have the quantity set. So now we're going to hit add pricing from a vendor. Once you have all your vendors added to the system, they will populate in the screen. My suggestion is to have all your vendors added to the system first and then start adding items in inventory. This way you can associate the vendor with the item right away. So now we're going to select Adam Chips. Enter the part number. The part number is usually supplied from the vendor themselves. We're just going to type in a number here just to show you how it works. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's hit enter. We're now going to hit save. So now that we have a vendor added to this product, we can now order more of it. 
Let's hit save and let's create a purchase order and show you what I mean. So now let's exit out. We're now going to go into it. administrative number five, letter G, vendor maintenance. We are now going to hit number five, administrative, and letter H, purchase orders. We're now going to click on add on your top right. When you hit add, you have two types of purchase orders that you can create a standard purchase order, and a return to vendor. A return to vendor would be something that's either damaged or maybe received the wrong product. We're going to click on standard purchase order. We're now going to select our vendor on our left. Once you have the vendor selected, we can now hit add items and it will show you all of the items that are associated with Adam's chips. As you can see, we only have the one product. To order more of this product, we can either scan the product or we can double click on it. Let's double click on the product. When you double click on the product, it brings it to the bottom of the screen here. Let's order more of this product by clicking into the quantity ordered field. Let's type in 100. So we already know currently in stock that we have 100. So when we order more of this product, and receive this product, it should bring our stock up to 200. So now let's hit save. Now for this vendor, we have it set to print. So this is why it's prompting me would I like to print a copy of this purchase order. I'm going to say no for now because I do not have a printer attached to my computer. So after you hit your method of printing, it then shows you that the purchase order has a status of O which means that, this, that the uh, purchase order is still open. We can now double click on the purchase order and take a look at it. So now that we put our purchase order through, <clears throat> a day has gone by and our vendor has now come with our product. We now need to receive that product. We're now going to double click on the line and hit receive item. Enter line number to receive. The line number is 1, so we're going to leave that the way it is. Enter the quantity received. We're going to hit 100 because we received 100. We're now going to hit update. Your changes have been saved. Hit OK to that. Now we can double click on the purchase order and close it out because we have already received this product. So double click hit close and hit close purchase orders may not be reopened are you sure you would like to close this purchase order yes we are we're now going to click on exit and take a look at the item in inventory number five administrative letter a inventory maintenance we're now going to hit look up again because this is your most fastest and efficient way of looking up your items in inventory and we're going to type in the first couple letters of our product, Doritos, D-O-R. There it is. Double click on the product, and it now shows you that my number in stock is 200. Now that is one method of adjusting your number in stock, receiving your items and ordering your items. The other method is Instant PO. Instant PO are for items that are not associated with items in inventory. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's look up another item. We'll look up a piece of candy. Let's hit our drop down arrow, select our candy department. Shows you that I have a starburst, starburst in here. Now I can bring this, I can adjust this stock by using my instant PO because this item is not associated with the vendor. Now this will allow me to add and deduct. So let's hit instant PO and enter how many we want to receive. So let's say we receive another five. That's going to bring our stock up to 100. Okay. Now let's remove from that stock. We'll do another instant PO. And we can do minus 50. We'll do minus 50. You'll notice that it's going to bring my stock down to 50. Now another option I want to show you that you can enable when adjusting your items through an instant PO is that you can set up a prompt so this way, when you run your report, 
you'll know any reasons for your adjustments that you've made in inventory. Now we're going to hit save on this product and we're going to exit. We're now going to hit setup number four and setup screen. We're now going to click on the inventory tab in your setup screen. We're going to have required description for instant POs. This way we know why the inventory was adjusted and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's hit update and now we're going to go back into number five and inventory maintenance. Let's look up our item Starburst. There it is. We're now going to double click on the product. And now when I hit Instant PO, it's going to prompt me for a reason of why I'm adjusting the inventory. So let's say Instant PO, and I received more of this product. So this would be a reason why I'm adjusting my inventory. So I'll leave that the way it is. Let's say we received another 50, which should bring our stock up to, to 100. As you can see, the system now knows why I brought my stock up to 100 because I just received more of that product. Now let's say we received that product, but 50 of those products were damaged. We can hit Instant PO, erase the reason for the adjustment, and type in damaged. Now we'll hit Enter, hit minus 50 because 50 of those that we received were damaged. So we'll hit OK to that and our stock is now back down to 50. So two ways of adjusting your number in stock by ordering and receiving your items through vendors and purchase orders or by using the instant PO. Last thing I want to show you is backing up your database. Now it is highly recommended to make a credit card settlement when backing up your database but just to give you uh, a, a way around that, I'm going to show you how you can bypass that prompt. So backup database, and when you hit backup database, this prompts you for a username and password. Again, the defaulted ID is admin on the top and 01 at the bottom. A-D-M-I-N, enter, and 01, enter. As I mentioned, it is strongly recommended to make a credit card settlement before backing up your database. Have you settled your credit card transactions? So it's, you know, it's the beginning of the day, but you know, we haven't ran our credit card transaction, but I want to, I'm going to say yes anyway, because I like to make multiple backups throughout the day. It's very, 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 very important to make your backups. I can't stress that enough. So let's hit yes. And it is recommended to save your backup to a flash drive, a hard drive, or even offsite. We're going to call the backup today's date, 7-11-2013. We're also going to put a timestamp on here so I know exactly when the backup was made. Because as I said, I like to make multiple backups throughout the day. So 10.05 a.m. I'm now going to hit my desktop because right now I do not have a hard drive or a flash drive connected. But later on, when I connect my hard drive or flash drive, I can literally just drag and drop it onto my hard drive or flash drive. So I'm just going to hit save and save it to my desktop for easy finding. And take a couple seconds, and there you go. Your database has been successfully backed up. Now, the reason why we, why we recommend doing a credit card settlement and your end of day is because we want the backup to have the most recent information. God forbid your system goes down for any reason, you know, maybe a power outage or uh, maybe somebody broke in for any reason. You know, as long as you have this backup stored on a separate device, you know, all we have to do is reinstall the software, restore your backup, and you're back where you left off with the most recent information. So this way you don't lose a day of work. Now this concludes our training on vendors and purchase orders. I hope you enjoyed the training. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great day.